Hello and welcome to another episode of the Connect Cape Fear podcast. I am your host, Rob Renz. We are joined today by Jamie Stokely from Helping Hands of Cape Fear. How are you doing today, Jamie? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. I'm fantastic. It's chilly. It's unseasonably cold here in the Wilmington area. Yeah. Um, but we're getting through it okay, right? Yeah, exactly. We don't have it nearly as bad as the people in the Midwest that are <laughs> dealing with sub-zero <laughs> temperatures and snow. So right. <laughs> all in all, I'm very, very thankful for all that. Yeah. Jamie, tell us a little bit. How long have you been in Wilmington for? Well, I was born and raised in Wilmington. Okay. Yep. So I'm a Wilmingtonian. Wilmingtonian. Oh, yeah. Not many uh, people today in 2024 can say that they were born and raised Wilmingtonians. Absolutely. I hear that all the time. How have you seen, how have you seen this area change? Just... Oh, man. I mean, I was raised up on the north side of town. Okay. The new downtown now, okay. I would must say. Um, and it has changed tremendously from, you know, what I remember walking to New Hanover High School mm -hmm. right there from, you know, Harnett Street on down to Market Street. Yeah. I mean, it just has changed, you know, tremendously. The population has changed. The way the houses look have changed. Yeah. So the traffic has changed. Yeah, yeah, All yeah. All has changed, you know. But overall, what I can see, it has changed for the good. Yeah. There's so many more opportunities downtown. Okay. Um, you know, so I'm downtown a lot, a lot more than I w used to be. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah, uh, downtown has definitely experienced a revitalization. Mm -hmm. I started coming to Wilmington uh, when I was in the Marines in, in Camp Lejeune in like the early 2000s. And downtown wasn't necessarily an area that was, that was where a lot of people, local people went. Right. You know, you might have some out-of-towners or visitors or dumb Marines uh, mm -hmm. coming down to have a weekend or something um, and, uh, and get into some trouble. But mm -hmm. now today it seems much more family-friendly. Um, great, great restaurants, yeah. like uh, uh, just kind of a vibrant scene. Is that what you're seeing in downtown too as well? Absolutely. I mean, years ago, you know, I would go downtown you know, just to kind of hang out. Mm -hmm. You know, I would go and not want to go sometimes. But now I can see myself going down with me and my children, you know, having a good time. Yeah. Walking on the boardwalk and different things that I, I wouldn't have done 10 years ago. Yeah. And they're putting a lot of development in there too, the Project Grace and just so many things that are happening down there to, to bring, you know, more energy or yeah. community uh, to the downtown area. So I think it's all in all, it's, it's cool. good. Yeah. We need to have areas like yeah. that where... We can gather as a community and celebrate and, yep. and, and do things, really. I'm excited about it. Yeah. yeah. Tell us a little bit about Helping Hands of Cape Fear. You're the founder. Yes. Um, you started it uh, in 2019, you said? Yes. Okay. 2019, um, Helping Hands of the Cape Fear was founded, a non-medical home care agency. Um, I started actually doing this work. I've been in healthcare now for about 17 years. Okay. You know, so I've started as a... CNA, then I went to nursing school, Brunswick Community College. Okay. And I graduated from LPN school, realized that that was, you know, not what I wanted to do as I still took care of my mom mm -hmm. at her bedside and she had lupus and COPD. So, you know, navigating through nursing school and taking care of her, I realized, you know, hey, I want to do more. When she passed away in 2019, it was a, you know, bit of a challenge for mm. me. Um, and I decided to go back to school for and get my bachelor's in healthcare management and business administration, which is a dual degree. Mm -hmm. I graduated from Mount Olive and I did that because I seen that there was such a need for resources and services for the elderly and disabled that just could not navigate all the complex systems in the healthcare world. Yeah. And so I thought to take it a step further and say, Hey, instead of just being by the bedside, walking with them, talking with them, how about changing the trajectory of mm. their lives mm. by digging into the healthcare system. Um, and at that time, I started to partner with all kinds of organizations, locally and statewide. National Patient Advocacy Foundation was um, one of my crossroads, I must say. Um, I was invited to sit on a patient advocacy board with the National Patient Advocacy Foundation. And it just broadened my horizons and it brought so many resources out of state to our community, to this disadvantaged community that I was dealing with. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I seen that that was my niche. My niche was to address the whole being of an individual, a disabled or an elderly individual mm -hmm. from the housing sector to health care to social determinants and health care disparities. Yeah. Um, and I love it. Yeah. 
good, love it. good for you. It's certainly one thing, um, you know, to just be there at their bedside or help with the activities of daily life mm -hmm. um, and just be human to human with somebody who's aging. But, you know, the, the stressors that lie underneath for a lot of our aging population are still there whether or not they have somebody in their house just to talk to or just to assist with the things that they need to do to maintain their hygiene or have a hot meal or stuff like that so so good on you for Absolutely. doing that what can you so it's it, you serve the whole cape fear region is it pender brunswick new hanover what's the communities so it's new hanover brunswick and bladen county okay bladen okay okay yeah. and then can you kind of paint the picture for the people that would be watching this like how how big is the opportunity, I guess, for, for us to serve the aged population in, in those counties? Well, <clears throat> the need for the services are growing mm. at a high demand. Our phones never stop ringing. Wow. And people are calling from all over the Cape Fear region for our services. Um, the insured, the underassured, you know, private pay home care services, the homeless population needs health care. The hospitals need help getting these individuals help, and the actual providers needs assistance to help get follow-up care for these individuals. So we're receiving calls from all over for different types of services right. that I've just never seen before and that we actually have the capacity to serve in. You know, so right now, you know, I'm speaking more to providers and, you know, insurance companies and hospitals to say, hey, what type of partnerships and momentum can we build here to ensure that we're all on one page and communicating so we can help this high demand of individuals that need health care and that need, you know, um, access right. to the health care that I know the Cape Fear region can provide. Yeah. Yeah. How are you a one woman show at Helping Hands or, or do you have a team of volunteers? Like, how are you managing all that? So I am absolutely not a one woman. Show. Oh, good. OK. OK. Because I was going to put that call. I was going to be like, come give this lady some help. <laughs> um, I do have a team. OK. Um, at Helping Hands, we are a team of healthcare professionals and also case managers. Okay. You said you have healthcare professionals working with you and for you and case managers. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of explain what the two of those functions do? Absolutely. So our healthcare professionals actually help the individuals navigate their healthcare systems, manage their doctor's appointments, you know, ensure that they're following up okay. with their healthcare plan and team. Our case managers actually help them to navigate life mm. from whatever they may need to succeed or, you know, to get through daily life to whatever that situation is that right. they're trying to heal to or get to. Our case managers come in, they navigate all kind of resources, partner with nonprofits to gather the things that these individuals need to move forward, mm. whether that's clothing, toiletries, whether that's housing, whatever that may be, yeah. our case managers address that need. Wow. What a heavy, heavy burden to shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. You know? um, I have pa parents that are aging, and, and fortunately, they live right next door to my wife and I. My wife is a nurse practitioner, so she can provide care as it's needed as they're aging. But then you just look at, you know, we have a, we have a baby boomer population that 10,000 are turning 65. Yeah. Um, I think it's every month, something mm -hmm. like that. And so we have a big generational cohort that's coming into their golden years yeah. um, and forces that are sometimes difficult, like managing health care and navigating through those systems and insurance and just like it's a human need, right? Everybody needs it, but not everybody has the capability um, or even the ability sometimes to like get through that Absolutely. and just get get what they need to feel like yeah. a person um, for it as took, long as they possibly can with some dignity, right? Yeah. yeah. It took years for me to actually learn and practice. When I was a one-man one army, yeah. you know, it took years for me just to continue to navigate these systems, learn them in and out, get familiar with healthcare systems and hospitals and how these things work. Yeah. Because as you know, coming from the bedside, mm. you know, the bedside showing compassion and, you know, being, you know, sympathetic all the time. Right to actually dealing with the systems and how they work and cracking the code, if I must say, yeah. 
to make sure that our people get the, the, the things that they need. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it definitely was a challenge. But once I, you know, became an expert at it, you know, I, I feel like I'm definitely a gift and a blessing to the organization. Which, which with that, you got to be more of a bulldog on that side, I would imagine. Like, yes. you got to knock down some doors and, and say, you know, no, this is not right. Like, having a very specific value set and principles. And that's totally different than providing care and empathy and sometimes sympathy at the bedside, <clears> right? <throat> oh, yeah. How'd you turn that light switch on, personally? Like... Advocacy is what I must say. Okay. And so alongside home care, I also advocate for the disabled and Asian community mm -hmm. as well. And I, I found my voice when, you know, I would just go into these places and not stop until, for one, my mom had what she needed before she passed away. Yeah. But then each client that I served... I would just have this inner voice for them and would not stop until every check box was checked. Yeah. And and that's when I found, you know, hey, this is a service as well. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I'm doing this service, you know, just just out of, you know, goodwill at that time. Right. Um, and then I started to just open up more and get connected with other advocacy foundations mm -hmm. and you know, I, I sit on many of boards with the Endowment Foundation. I've sat on the advisory board there, still do. Also, um, the Cape Fair Homeless Continuum of Care, I sit on their board and I advocate there. Mm -hmm. um, and so with that, you know, that, that voice came. And as you say, being a bulldog is what you have to be in that fight. Yeah. Because, you know, I say this, no matter who I serve, one or 100, they will have what they need. Yeah. And, you know, and, and that's what I tell them. And I mean that I don't sell dreams. You know, I make promises that I can keep. Yeah, that's so refreshing to know that you're in you're walking in your purpose. You mm -hmm. know, sometimes and I think you kind of touched on it. You know, sometimes losing somebody death has uh, just an in, incredible impact, even though, you know, you miss the person. But you can take all of those the sum of all those experiences and like change the trajectory of your life or as you put it you know other people's lives and it's yeah. just it's great to be around when people are like nope i know why i'm here i know what i'm doing i know who i'm serving this is my purpose i'm just going to yep. go for it yep so what what do you need um from people that might be watching this like how can the community support you in your effort to support others mostly we're, you know right now i'm looking for partners partners individuals that you know have the will and the same mission and vision to help in the healthcare industry, you know, to provide any services to the individuals that are at a disadvantage, mm -hmm. whether insured or underinsured. You know, right now we're digging into the homeless population that also needs health care. Yeah. Um, when dealing with case management, resources, and need, that they need all things. So donations is always accepted through our doors, mm -hmm. whether it be, like I said, uh, monetary or the things that you think an individual would need on a daily basis, you know, all the way from food to clothing to what have you. So if I, it, that, that's what we're looking for. Okay. Okay. Do you all have, um, it's, it's January right now as of recording this will probably February by the time that we release it. Mm -hmm. Do you have any campaigns or anything coming up in the 2024 year that you want to preview for people so they can get behind you and rally rally the, the troops, so to speak, or get behind the cause? Yes, and may we have a lupus awareness event. Okay. This will be our second annual, um, May the 17th of 2024. Okay. Um, we'll have more details coming soon, but that is definitely something that we need to rally behind. Okay, okay. So if you want people to get in touch with you, um, you, they go to your website, they can find out more about this event or just helping, helping hands of the Cape Fear in general. How would you want people to get in touch with you, Jamie? Uh, we have a, uh, our website is online. We have our website, also email. You can also always give us a call at 910-447-9737. Okay. That's our 24 hour line. Okay. Call anytime, ask for me. My case managers will get whoever, whomever in touch with me and we'll go from there. I love it. Um, well, uh, I, I really appreciate you coming on. I appreciate the work that you're doing. Um, you know, we have to, it, it really, it truly, we say it takes a village to raise a child. It also takes a village to care for our elderly um, in a lot of different ways. And I couldn't think of a better 
um, cause to get behind. And I'm glad that I met you. I can feel your energy. I can feel your passion and just understand that um, exactly like you said, no checkbox left unchecked for anybody <laughs> that, that comes under your come, comes under your wing. So wish you nothing but the best. Thank you. Um, all the success. And then anybody who's watching this, um, please find Helping Hands of the Cape Fear online. That phone number again, I just want to make sure I get it right, is 910 910- Four four seven nine seven three seven. Yes. Yeah, and so that's twenty four hour hotline. So uh-huh. well, maybe before we before we break, because we got a few more minutes here. What would somebody call that number for? Like uh, this? Hey, I my, you know, can you give a scenario? Like I need a meal, or I need some some hygienic products, or the okay. heat's not working at my house. Like, what can people call you and ask you for? Okay, so we specifically um, serve the elderly and disabled communities um, and we provide a home care service service so within that home care service if we see there is a need for additional resources at that time mm-hmm. we start to navigate the systems okay. so just to make it transparent you know we don't just serve a vast of the community and give out different resources there actually is an intake into our program okay. we'll actually go from there whether that be with our for-profit organization or our non-profit organization, which serves the uninsured, but you have to come through through a home care through the home care agency. Um, I just want to make that clear. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, thank you so much. Yeah, there's a lot of great uh, non-profit organizations mm-hmm. over there. Sometimes they overlap with each other, and mm-hmm. sometimes they get calls for things that they they can't help with. It's just not within their scope. So I think it's important that people know, like, okay, I'm calling you because I have this need. Otherwise, they will have to refer you to somebody else that we might work with. But um, we probably have that solution in our community somewhere, too, as well. Wilmington seems to be, like, a really caring and benevolent type of area. Like, we we want to help in a lot of ways. And so... um, And I've, I've had that before. I've had a couple of, you know, interviews and... Um, with the, with the dying need here, you mm-hmm. know, the, the calls start to just soar in and, you know, I unfortunately hate to tell someone, Hey, that's just not what we do. Yeah. So I try to make it very, very clear now on, um, what we do and how we do it. You know, so again, I'll say we serve the disabled and elderly population, majority elderly populations that just do not have what they need to stay in place and, you know, heal at home. And we try to provide them with we, we provide them with home care and services. Um, so that's what we do. That's at great. Helping that's Connect. great. Thank you so much, Jamie. Appreciate you being here. Um, that's going to do it for this episode of the Connect Cape Fear podcast. Uh, if you felt moved by this, if you felt um, like you want to get involved with this, anytime we have a benevolent organization on, we want to put the challenge out to stop watching this video, go to their website, donate a hundred bucks, donate some of the things that they might need to be able to serve their population, and then find out how you might be able to give some of your time as a volunteer in that capacity too as well. So thank you again for joining us. Until next time, we hope that you go out and enjoy this beautiful place that we call home and work with these amazing organizations that are serving our communities in real meaningful and impactful ways. Thanks. Talk to you next time.